Hi and uh, welcome to our uh, webinar on uh, electrosurgical uh, devices. Uh, I'm Michael Walton, Application Engineer at Rigel. And I'm Andrew Davis, a Business Development Manager for Rigel Medical. Today we're going to go through some of the methodologies of testing electrical surgical um, devices. Um, we're going to go through the Rigel Unitherm, we're going to go through a little bit of theory and we're going to go through a little bit of practical. So I will uh, crack on with it. Just a little bit about Seaward. Um, Seaward have been around for over 35 years. Rigel are part of Seaward for the last um, 20 years. All of the manufacturing uh, R&D is done in the UK. We are ISO 9001 um, accredited and we have ISO 17025. We offer a growing range of biomedical test solutions um, including the Unitherm for electrosurgical devices and we have a global distribution and after-sale network. So, electrical uh, lateral surgery, the manipulation of human tissue through the use of high-frequency current. Um, effectively what we have if we go to the radio frequency spectrum is um, a lot of surgery sits around about 500 kilohertz typically. Um, what is happening is it's the trans transformation of electrical energy into thermal energy. And this results in the effect of cutting and the coagulation of tissue. Um, typically with... Typically with monopolar surgery um, you will have a return plate attached to a patient and you will have a Bovi pencil to cut the patient open. Um, the point of contact on the patient, on the, electric, uh, on the active electrode, is um, the, where the point of contact uh, for cutting the patient open. The biological tissue provides the impedance which results in the transformation of electrical energy to thermal heat as electrons try to pass and overcome the impedance. Um, commercial frequencies are at 50 and 60 Hertz if we look at the, um, the spectrum. Uh, typically the have the worst outcome for the, a human um, where you have frequencies that can cause acute pain, muscle spasms, uh, cardiac arrest and other heart arrhythmias. Muscle and nerve simulation uh, doesn't respond over 100 kilohertz. So in this region here, the stimuli of muscle um, and the stimuli of neural sensors um, is not affected um, so RF radio frequencies of greater than 200 kilohertz are not susceptible um, to muscular tissue uh, to that of commercial frequencies. So commercial frequencies are much more dangerous to the human body. Therefore, in electrical electrosurgery, we can pass current through a patient, um, and it's all really about the um, surface area. So if we look at the diagram we have the patient on the table, we have the return plate. When we look at surface area the patient plate is the return plate that uh, gets fed back into the uh, ESU, the Bovi pencil is the active electrode. Um, the active electrode has high current density um, produced by the tip of the probe uh, for localized thermal heating. So at this point here we're going to have all of the destructive effect. The return plate has a, a larger surface area and has a thermal effect but it's not a destructive effect. 
Um, so this results in thermal heating that's destructive, that can be used for cutting, um, uh, fulguration and desiccation of tissue. Cutting and fulguration requires sparking at larger uh, voltages where desiccation requires larger currents. And bipolar, that, that was our discussion about monopolar, bipolar is between uh, some forceps where the active could be on this part of the forcep, the return would be on the other part of the, the forcep. Um, effectively, this is for, uh, you go on, or at least the tissue is less impedance because it's a smaller amount of tissue. Typically, this is done at much lower voltages um, and the thermal energy dissipated is pretty even. This results in uh, coagulation of tissue with less damage to surrounding tissues. Uh, desiccation is without sparking on the tissue and uh, it can be used um, on tissue that may have larger conductive properties. So w when using an, an ESU, when using an electrosurgical unit, um, there's two methods to cut a patient open. With pure cut, which is a, a, a sine wave in this region here, um, the voltage is increased to drive the current through the body. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, it's typically 500 kilohertz. Um, so that's one method of cutting a patient open. Another method is modifying waveforms to influence um, the body, bodily um, tissue manipulation. So the diathermy will have different blends and, uh, and coag. The cutting, and the pure cutting, creates an electric spark gap for localized extreme thermal heating and vaporization of intracellular fluid where cells will burst. Uh, you get a clean incision and you have minimal coagulation. Whereas coagulation, this waveform here, you have less heat, uh, resulting in evaporation and slow dehydration, therefore sealing blood vessels and keeping cells intact. Typically this is done at much lower uh, wattage values of what pure cut. So pure cut, you could go up to 300 watts, 400 watts. When we use coag, you can, you know, typically 30 to uh, 50 watts is, is okay, but uh, the full range of wattage is much less used than it is using a pure, pure cut. Um, with coagulation, the desiccation is direct contact with, with lower current density, uh, full Fulguration is non-contact using a spark gap. You, we have blended waveforms. These blended currents operate at voltages between cut and quark, so it's a mixture of the two. And the, the degree of hemostasis is defined by the on-off ratio of the waveform. So surgeons have the option to combine cut and uh, uh, coagulate to achieve the, desi the desired uh, surgical effect, vaporizing and coagulating tissue. When we look at these waveforms and we look at service manuals, the service manual perhaps may ask to look at the crest factor. The crest factor is um, a ratio of peak voltage divided by RMS voltage. Um, a pure cut will have 1.4, coagulation can typically have um, a reading of 10. So testing um, electrical surgical units, um, electrical surgical generators are used in 85% of all surgical operations. 
There is a IEC requirement of 60601-2-2. Um, typically, you can have testing periods between 6 to 12 months. This is all generally, um, you would use a risk assessment to evaluate the frequency of testing of uh, electrical surgical units. Testing is considered to be complex and time consuming. Um, but typical uh, ESU testing will have a visual test of the medical device and then perhaps we can check that the power output. Maybe this, the service manual will stipulate current as a reading or power measurement. Sometimes a service manual might ask for a high frequency leakage current um, of the active and dispersive probes and then um, we have patient plate monitoring. After you've done your performance tests um, you will carry out uh, electrical safety tests. Typically it will be 62353 for in current uh, service testing. So the Unitherm has a connection at the side of the instrument, this side panel is where we have the resistance or impedance uh, we have the measuring device and we have some resistance here for the high frequency leakage um, capabilities of, of the unitherm that uh, are stipulated by the, the 60601 standard we also have some sockets on the front panel this is for our patient plate uh, monitoring this is for our remote switching of uh, cut um, in monopolar. This is for our um, quag cut. So we can remotely test um, the instrument without using foot switches. This is very useful and uh, keeps the, the instrument um, almost to the point in you are switching high frequency currents at high loads up to five amps. You're switching in relays, you have less arc, and you've got better control and better longevity of your um, electrosurgical analyzer. The impedance, we can go from short circuit to 5,100 ohms. Effectively, the impedance is simulating the patient. Um, in service manuals, and we'll go into this later, you will see uh, a electrosurgical unit and how it responds to different impedances. And we have a graph to look at the, the power dissipation across different impedances. But the way that I look at any of our devices, we are simulating a patient um, using different um, resistances. So to perform a test and what is required as per 60601-2-2 and in service manuals we have high frequency power measurement we have high frequency leakage current measurement and then we have our patient um, players monitoring performing um, high frequency power measurement the measurement of output power on the load for uh, electrosurgical units so we're measuring output current which is sometimes specified in the service manual the output voltage both peak and rms output wattage the crest factor um, and we connect the instrument under test to the unitherm it's recommended that you test all of the modes um, single test at max power and we have pass fail limits given by the manufacturer the instrument that we have under test today is um, plus or minus 20% um, accurate. So connecting up the Unitherm, um, and we'll, we'll show you a video because we've got some live testing here as part of this webinar. We have for high frequency, we put the active to our red socket. It, the current flows through the resistance, through the measuring device, 
and then back to our patient return plate. Um, for the remote section, we wire our cut to the foot switch and our coagulation to the foot switch. The accessories are we provide both for foot switch um, integration and for active and return plate integration. This is an accessory that we provide with our Unitherm. So more about the Unitherm, we can measure up to 6 amps, um, 8 amps peak to peak, voltage, wattage, crest factor. The resistance is an interesting one because the, our resistance load bank is very low inductance. So if you measure in high frequencies, um, typically um, 500 kilohertz in radio frequencies, inductance and capacitance within um, a circuit are fairly crucial because you can have an attenuating effect and other idiosyncrasies with measuring voltage and current and power. Um, Rigel's load bank, the load bank that is it's, it's almost to the point in when we've had it to manufacturers, electrical, surgical, uh, unit manufacturers, it's, it's a superior load bank. It has very, very low inductance and high accuracy. And you're talking 1% accurate and um, steps of 5 ohms. Um, there's no real need for an extra... Uh, external loads but you, there is an option to use external load if required there's automated power testing and graphical results um, we have a hundred kilovolts uh, worth of voltage isolation and the frequency range is typically up to uh, 2.5 megahertz so we we can test up to diaphragms that uh, will put out up to 2.5 megahertz. The, the real good thing about the, the Unitherm is that we, we provide on-screen diagrams for the biomed or clinical engineer to set up their testing. Um, so this is our side panel which I, I, we shown you earlier. You would put the active cut to the red socket through the resistance, through the measuring device. We have some link jumpers, which you'll see later on in our video demonstration. And this, through the measuring device, goes back to our patient plate. That was for cut. This is for coag. It's a very similar setup. Um, effectively, a, a lot of the time, you would just be changing foot position, um, which can be remotely done on the Unitherm. Bipolar, uh, we have a setup where the return plate is inactive and we set the tester up to go via our load bank through the measuring device and then back into the bipolar um, socket. How can we present results? You can upload reference curves to the Unitherm, so if you have an Excel spreadsheet and you have typical um, power reference um, graphs, that them, them can be uploaded to the Unitherm. And what the Unitherm does is you apply X amount of power for argument's sake, um, 300 watts, and then we switch different impedances in. So the y-axis is wattage, the x-axis is uh, resistance, and you can plot your um, performance of your um, electrosurgical unit against the reference map that is typically from a service manual. So now what I'm going to do is do a little bit of a, a manual test. What we have here is we have an electrosurgical instrument and we have uh, our Unitherm. So the setup with the, the Unitherm, I'll just 
manipulate the, the, the characters there, the cameras even. The side panel, we have our active electrode. This is a lead that we provide, which is a, a stackable and it's a shielded lead that goes into um, the red socket. The current will flow through our variable resistance, which is controlled internally in our unitherm. We have a jumper lead here. Um, the jumper leads are for different configurations of testing both power and um, high frequency leakage. Then we go through our measuring device, and then we have our alert, our um, patient place return. So. That is the diagram for that instrument. To perform the test, I'll manually, I will press power tests. I'm going to select continuous. And then part of the, what the manufacturer stipulated for this instrument is that we have to have the settings on the screen there we have full we have 300 watts it's pure cup mode we have the um, the foot switch enabled so we can have that wired into the unitherm and then we have a different effects that are stipulated within the service manual setup on the unitherm, what I have is we have we set that up to one polar. We we can select the load, and I'm going to select 500 ohms. We've got start delay, which typically would just leave it to 200 milliseconds. We have test time. We're going to leave 10 seconds for to get stable results. We have our ESU control, we're going to be doing pure cut um, and then we have a duty cycle which is the on off. If we want to look at the setup I can have a look at the diagram on screen to help the biomed or clinical engineer set the instrument up as far as the side panel is concerned. So with all, everything set up I'm just going to press start And then we see the readings on there, RMS power, RMS current, RMS voltage, etc. So that's manual mode. And if you are going to treat the instrument manually, you can fill in your uh, paperwork and we can, we can do that quite easily. What the Unitherm also provides is if we go into auto mode, I can select, let's say, the asset ID of an instrument. For the purpose of this video, I'll just say our asset is 377. I can confirm that by pressing our start key. I have a test sequence in here for the instrument under test. I'm going to press next. And then I've got some information on there. So another beauty of the Unitherm is I can put test sequences within the Unitherm so I don't have to refer to service manuals. I can fully tailor information into an automatic test. Um, so it's telling us to set the, um, the instrument up, apply an effect and apply the amount of wattage. Um, and then what I can do is all of the settings within the, um, the Unitherm will be automatically selected. So we have our 500 ohms and these we can't edit them at this point but what we can do is uh, it's just a really comprehensive way and concise way of doing some testing once we're satisfied with that we also have our pass fail thresholds of um, the instrument under test so it will tell you if it's within specification or out of specification and we'll just do another test So we can 
save those results and those results can be viewed, can be downloaded and we can put those results later into Medibase or I'll put them as CSV or whatever requirement you would like for your testing purposes. So that's just a little about the power testing. What we're going to move on to now is high frequency leakage current measurement. So high frequency leakage current tests of electrical surgical generators is required as specified in the standard but may not be included in a PM schedule. Um, and why is it important? Because it involves patient safety. So, so you ensure that the electrosurgical unit circuitry is properly limiting the amount of capacitive leakage at high frequency currents. The frequencies are exceeding 400 kilohertz the electrical current has a tendency to stray, leading to decreased functionality and potential thermal injury. When we do this type of testing, what we're doing is almost setting it up in a fault condition. We won't have any load um, coming across the active and returning back into the, um, the patient return. It is open circuit testing on each of either the active or the um, return plate and typically this testing is done at max um, currents and max power. This is straight from the standard 60601-2-2 um, where we have the thermal effects of high frequency leakage in order to prevent unintended thermal burns High frequency leakage currents are tested from active to neutral electrodes with patient circuits. Um, the patient circuits are all internal to the rigel. We'll should go through and show you a quick demonstration of that. Um, and we're testing through a 200 ohm resistor and the current should not exceed 150 uh, milliamps. We can adjust that. Um, pass fail threshold accordingly um, within the unitherm because some manufacturers might stipulate a much lower level some manufacturers might stipulate a higher level um, as the leakage increases the thermal density of the surrounding patient tissue increases both at the active electrode and the dispersive electrode so thermal density causes unnecessary tissue, tissue damage how does the leakage occur? It's indirect coupling. Um, when RF energy is induced, a secondary non-intended current path through a conductive cir circuit. So the way I, I kind of see it is almost like you've got with RF energy, it's, it's pickup. It's pickup to surrounding areas. If you have a electrical surgical device and you have a bovy pencil in your hand and you press, um, if you're just waving this thing around in the air, you've got a radio antenna in your, in your hand, that's effectively what you have. Um, so the capacitive coupling is the frequency or high frequency alternating current can pass from a conductive material, i.e. the electrode, through the um, insulator of the electrode to another conductive part, which, be, which could be a metal cannula, the table, etc., etc. One thing I need to point out is that um, this, when we do high frequency leakage um, measurements, generally they're done in a laboratory, and the standard stipulates that you have clearance between electrodes and return plates, and um, it must be done on a wooden desk, um, and you, you you measure the distance, etc. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're not in a laboratory, a laboratory. we're in a, um, a demo live studio, but we can still show you um, some testing. So what I'll do, is we'll select our high frequency leakage test. And what we're going to do is we're going to test the cut. So from our diagram, we're going to 
Uh, we have our limit there of 150 milliamps. We're going to put the cut straight to the measuring device. We don't use the, um, the variable resistance that simulates the human body. We use our 200 ohm resistors as per 60601. One thing that I need to point out is this is a isolated or earth isolated ESU um, older ESUs can be earth referenced modern ESUs are generally floating devices and not earth the outputs will not be earth referenced so we have a bunch of diagrams for both earth reference and earth reference and um, isolated earth um, ESUs so we are going to use this diagram. I'm going to set this up. Now I'm going to show you our connection. We're going to put our active electrode into our measuring device. We're going to disconnect our patient plate because it isn't required. We're going to put our jumper into the measuring device. So the current path for the leakage flows through the measuring device, through our 200 ohm resistor and down to earth. That is what we're trying to measure with this test set up. So once we're satisfied with that, We're now going to do a test, just double check to see if I've got everything set up and then I'm going to press run. And there's our leakage limit which is well within the pass fail threshold. Just to reiterate the, the point, we're not in a laboratory, we're in a demo live room but still for the purposes of this video, we are uh, we're, we're shown that we can do high frequency leakage testing. Again, we can do that automatically as part of your PPM of your um, device. So, just a little bit of ma more about that, about the high frequency. It's tested in all modes um, on max power from the uh, electrical surgical uh, unit. We test active, we test the patient plates in monopolar mode, and then the first and second electrodes in bipolar mode. We're not gonna go through the whole PPM because time constraints. Um, we don't expect our customers to sit through an hour's worth of video. We're gonna try and keep this as concise as possible. One of the things that I must stress within this um, webinar is um, there will be a, a question answer session we'll leave you an, an email address at the end of this um, in this webinar from that you can fire over all of your questions and we'll get back to you um, as soon as possible so we have the active and electrodes that we uh, that should be tested uh, the test uh, simulate failure in either electrode or or how well the ESU shields the resultant leakage um, and the leakage should not exceed 150 milliamps or uh, 4.5 watts to ground through the 200 ohm load. As we shown on the Unitherm here some more diagrams of test and cut and quag test in the neutral um, which is a dispersive or patient plate and um, test in some of our bipolar um, high frequency leakage currents all of this is on screen diagrams which the, the purpose of which is that you don't need to use your service manual so a patient Pad monitoring. What is it about the names? Well, the name is generally linked 
are branded to a certain manufacturer. So Bovi has the split pad, Covidian has REM, Erby has Nessie, Megadime has Q, CQM, um, Olympus uses CQM, ComMed uses ARM. So it's all these different types of terminology. They're all the same much of a muchness. What you're doing is you're measuring the resistance between the patient plates. Um, what is it? It's the contact that provides or effectively keeps the patient safe. So at the beginning of the slide we talked about, or the beginning of the presentation even, we, we, we discussed um, surface area and how surface area is important um, in, in regards to current density. Now if you have a, one of the things that does happen in hospitals and is, uh, can lead to quite severe thermal um, damage of, of bodily tissue. If the return a plate starts peeling off the, the patient, which was generally on the leg, upper leg, then the, the surface area gets less. If the surface area gets less, this can lead to greater damage. This greater damage is a real problem within surgery so electrosurgical instruments monitor the impedance between the patient plates to make sure everything is safe. What are we doing? We provide almost like a decade box within the Unitherm. Um, this is a variable resistance and we can have we can set up alarms within um, the Unitherm to, uh, to provide the, the, the biomed or clinical engineer with, with um, check how the patient plate operates and if it is uh, fit for purpose. So what I'll do is I'll go back and do a demonstration of the purpose of testing. So if we go into REM, the instrument will self-calibrate. On the ESU what we have to do is we have to select split, pit, uh, split pads You will get a warning message. Typically, if our new electrode is out of the limits specified by the manufacturer, so what we have is we attach the patient plates to the REM socket, and then I can manually increase. And the manufacturer asks for, um, first of all, sorry, apologies for that, short circuit, we have an error. It's telling us a warning light, short circuit is no good. Then what we do is we increase the resistance to 20 ohms. We should have a pass, which is in green. So we have like a traffic light system that tells the operator that that resistance impedance is good and then if we increase the resistance to 100 ohms then we get another one message and that's part of this particular ESU's uh, PPM. So, once you're satisfied with all the testing and we have our Unitherm has been, um, all of the test sequences have been saved and all the, you have the data and the, the, the sequences have been set up as per uh, service manuals in accordance with PPMs that stipulated by the service manuals. We can transfer data and this data can be uh, put to Medibase 
and within Medibiz, we can do our, uh, whatever we want to do with that, with that data. We can produce certificates and we can do um, upload our power trace curves. We can export CSV. We can manipulate the data however we want to manipulate that data. So the specification of the machine, um, as far as the instrument's concerned, 30 hertz to 10 megahertz with loads, we go to 2.5 megahertz. We have a variable, very accurate um, load bank, a non-inductive load bank that has steps of 5 ohms at 1% accuracy. Um, the RF leakage measurements for active and for play, uh, for patient players, and then we have our range of um, patient plate monitoring, which is one ohm to um, 75, uh, 475 ohms in steps of one ohm. It's motor driven. It's a motor driven potentiometer. Um, and that's the end of our um, webinar. If you have any questions on the instrument, we've provided the, the email. We'd also like to introduce um, a guidance manual that we have on our website. If you go to rigelmedical.com and you go to download section and you go to guides, you will find um, a, a, the introduction of electrosurgery which is a very in-depth overview of how to test electrical surgical devices and using the unitherm. Um, thank you very much for everyone attending. I hope you're in touch very soon.